Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to give you a Notion content calendar tutorial that I use to manage my clients as a social media manager, but you can use this too if you are a content creator, just looking for an easy way to manage your content. I have actually made a previous Notion content calendar tutorial back in November, and I got a lot of questions about it because it is something that I, I use. You can see it here. You've got a feed view on the left, and then you've got the content calendar on the right. It makes it really simple and easy to use for your clients if you're managing clients. The only thing that I didn't like about it was that the feed view was just a picture. I was basically just using Canva and then just dragging the feed view in there. When I would organize my content and was moving it around, it wouldn't move the feed view around unless I did it in Canva and it was just a huge pain. I also got a couple of questions asking for updates if I was still using the content calendar, what I was doing differently. I do still use the simple format of this content calendar. I've just tweaked a couple of things that I want to share with you today that are really going to improve the content calendar. It's made my content planning so much easier and I know it's going to help you too. Here's what the updated content calendar looks like. You'll notice on the left that we've got a gallery view. Now it's not exactly like the Canva where you're actually seeing the feed view, but this has been a much better way than actually having a photo and it still does the job. The best part about this is if I am moving content around, it will move the pictures around for me. And one thing that I notice with my clients is when you're managing a lot of clients or you're working with really busy business owners, sometimes you will both forget to check the content calendar. So I'm going to show you how you can automate your content calendar. So whenever you select waiting for approval, it's going to send your client a notification, letting them know that there's content in the content calendar that's ready for them to approve. And once they either approve or they have a revision and they mark that on the content calendar, it will actually send you a notification. So then that way, you know, okay, I need to go in here and schedule all the content or revise any content that is marked needs revision. Now, I know some of you have commented, Notion is way too complicated for me. I could not figure this out and I totally get it. This is a little bit more complicated than the previous one. And so if you were like, I do not have time to figure this out, Notion is just a huge headache for me. I do have a template down below that you can purchase. That way it's all set up for you. You just plug it into your Notion and it's gonna make planning content and managing clients so much easier. And as always, if you find this helpful, please like and subscribe. I'm so close to getting a thousand subscribers, which I'm really excited about. So without further ado, let's Let's get into it. So the very first thing is you're going to open up Notion and you're going to open up a brand new page. Now, something that's really important is you want to make sure that this page is set to private so that you have access. You're the only one that has access. If you have your HQ and you have clients under there or any kind of projects and you have shared even just like a specific page with someone, if it's underneath that HQ, they can see everything within that. So you want to make sure that it's a private page. And then once you share it, it'll show up in your shared section. So we're gonna title this page, Instagram content calendar, okay? And then up here, we can add a cover. We're gonna change it to this one. I think it's so cute. You can even reposition it if you'd like, okay? Now the next thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna press down here and you're gonna do slash data database full page. So we're going to click on that. It creates a brand new page and we're going to name this Instagram post data. Okay. So this is where we're going to put in our content for the sake of this video. Let's say we just want to plan out nine pieces of content since that's the grid on Instagram. Okay. Perfect. Now we're going to add a property and we're going to select files and media. And right here, we're going to rename this thumbnails. We're just going to upload our thumbnails for our content. So this isn't the actual content. This is just the thumbnails that we want to show up on our feed. Another thing to keep in mind when you are uploading images and especially videos is if you're using the free version of Notion, it's going to limit you on how much you can upload. And so I would recommend investing in the monthly plan. I think it's like five or $10 a month, and then you can upload however much you want. But just keep that in mind, because if you're using the free version, you're not going to be able to upload everything you want. Okay, so now we have all our thumbnails uploaded. We're going to add another property. And we are going to do status. So right here, we're going to edit this property. And I'm going to keep the not started here. 
in progress, we're going to change to being edited. And then we're going to add another one waiting for approval. And I'm going to make this purple. And then I'm going to add another one needs revision. And we're going to make this one red. And you can slide these, so I, I will slide these over here. And then right here, we're going to name this approved. Okay, so this is the point where when the client goes in and when you go in, you can select, okay, here's the status of this content, um, if it's approved, if it hasn't been started, all that fun stuff. The other thing I like to add is a select, and this is where I can, I can mark what kind of content it is. So we'll do real and carousel. And for these ones, I like to just make them gray because, whoops. I like to make them gray or just the default because otherwise it's just a lot of colors going on and it's just a little bit easier to see. So we're gonna just put these in randomly. We're also gonna add a date and then you're just gonna insert the dates that you're going to be posting the content. Okay, so now that we have made the dates, we're gonna go back to our dashboard so we're gonna click up here and you're gonna notice that it makes that brand new page called Instagram post data. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click and we're gonna hit this plus and we're gonna put in two columns. Once you've done that, you'll see here in the middle, there's this gray line and we're going to do slash gallery, gallery view, database, click on that. And then we're gonna do link to existing database and we're going to link this to Instagram post data. So what we just made, okay? And then over here, we're gonna do the same thing, slash calendar, calendar view, click on that, link to existing database, same thing, Instagram post data, okay? Now you're gonna notice here, it's a little bit smushed, so we're gonna just grab this and we're gonna just slide it to the outside and that way you have a better view. You can also adjust this middle one as well. So now you see here that the numbers have popped up on our calendar. Another thing too is when we go next, you'll notice that I accidentally put six and nine on the same day and you can just drag it. So you can drag things around if you need to. And then to go back, you just click on today and it'll take you right back. Okay, so obviously we don't really see anything over here. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to settings and we're gonna go to layout. And we're gonna get rid of the database title because we don't really need it. Card preview, we're gonna select thumbnails and here are our thumbnails all popped up. Then we're gonna click on card size and we're gonna select small, okay? Now you'll notice here that it's in two columns. So what you can do is you can just drag this over and it'll put it into the nine, nine grid view. So let's go back to settings, go to layout. Another thing that we can do is we can fit the image. So if you wanna see the whole thumbnails, you can select it like this. And then that way you can see all the content. Right now, I'm just gonna fill the image. And then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do load limit to 10 since that's how much you see when you're scrolling on Instagram. So we're gonna click back and we're gonna go to property visibility and we're gonna unselect name and then that way we just have a clear view. Again, if we go back to gallery, you can do the fit image so it's a little bit cleaner, but again, it's up to you, your preferences. We're just gonna stick to this for now. And then you can reposition so it's not perfectly the same as an Instagram feed, but you're still able to see what's going on. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to settings here on the calendar. We're gonna hit layout. We're going to not show the title as well, so don't need it. And then you can also have the option of just showing it by a weekly basis if you're posting like every single day. We're just gonna keep it at monthly. And because we're not posting on weekends, I'm just going to move it to this. And again, it just makes a cleaner look a little bit easier to see. We're going to go back 
and we're going to go to property visibility. Now we have to have the name, but we do want to see the status and we want to see what kind of content that we're making. So we're gonna click on those eye symbols until we see it. So now you can see here that when you go to the content calendar, you're able to see, okay, here's the content and the client or you, you can go in and change it as needed. Within this too, I like to just put content and caption. Okay, so for example, I have my content. Let's say this is a video. You can adjust it here. You can also align it to the left or you can just move the caption so that this is the caption. So that way when the client clicks into the content, they'll see the title, red, K, or number one, whatever you wanna call it. And then they can go in, leave a comment, they'll see the caption and then the content, they can just press play and it'll play it. Again, you'd have to have the paid version to be able to play content in there because it will limit your uploads. So if you're not willing to pay, you can just link to your Google Drive or wherever you store your content. Okay, so let's go back out here. Now you'll notice that sometimes when you're planning out content, you're gonna wanna move things around to make it a little bit aesthetically pleasing. So for example, like there's no people in here and then there's people up here. So maybe I wanna move this down here. Maybe you wanna move this over here. But what happens is nothing on the content calendar changes and so things can get really messy really quick because I can also move things around over here and nothing happens on the feed. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to sort and we're gonna sort it by the date. And you'll notice that if it's ascending, this is the first one. So this is number two, this is number one. The problem is, is that's not how you're posting. Number one should be down here. So we're gonna do descending, okay? Does that make sense? So then the ones that are posted first are at the bottom. So now what will happen is if I'm adjusting the feed and I'm switching things around, you'll notice that the feed on the left changes with it, okay? So it just makes it a little, little bit easier to plan out content and see what's going on. Now, the only thing I have to say is if you try to move these around, it's gonna remove the sorting, so you won't be able to do that. The last step is to make this a little bit more user-friendly. So we're gonna move this down to the bottom, just wherever, we can put it here. And then I wanna make this a little bit more of a dashboard. So again, we're gonna put in two columns over here. I'm gonna make it bigger. And then we're gonna insert a little call out and we're gonna do upcoming events. So for example, we have 4th of July. And so maybe we wanna print, plan like a promo for that, okay? So that way it's marked, we have that coming up. You can even change the color if you'd like. We'll just do gray for now. And then same thing over here. You can also add a little toggle list. So content needed. Okay, it's, and then we can film a tutorial, for example, or whatever you need. And then they can just kind of do that. So you can do as many toggles as you like. So, so yeah, so this is the dashboard. This is the kind of the client portal. So you can format this so it looks a little bit prettier. One thing that is really, really helpful is sometimes if you're managing a lot of clients or your client is really busy and life just happens, sometimes you both will forget to look at the content calendar or maybe you'll miss some content. And so something that you can do is you can add another view and you can select table and it's gonna show you all the status of, okay, here's the content that needs revision all in one place so that way you're not like scrolling throughout it. So that's one way to do it. But one thing that I love to do is I love setting up an automation. So every time I set content as waiting for approval, I want it to send a notification to my client. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So we're gonna go over to this little lightning icon and we're gonna add a new trigger. So we're gonna go down to status, 
to select any option and then we're going to select waiting for approval. Once that's added, then you're going to do new action and you can have all these different options. So you can send a notification. If they have it downloaded on their phone, it can send a notification. I personally like doing a send email because we all get email notifications. So you just insert their email, you can insert a subject. So for example, content is ready. And then you can also do whatever message you'd like. And once you're done, then you can press enable. And every time you select waiting for approval, it's gonna send them a message. The other thing you can do to select everything and you can do needs revision. So then every time that the client selects needs revision, it can send you an email. So then you can send an email to yourself letting you know, hey, there's content that needs revision. And again, you can do that with approved. So same thing. And then once it's approved, for example, you know it's approved, you can go into the content calendar, schedule out your content or post, whatever you need to do there. And that's a big game changer. It just creates a better flow between communication with you and your client. And so I highly recommend using automations like that to just make it a little bit more seamless and user-friendly. I realized that I forgot one important step. So obviously this is only going to show 10 content pieces, but if we post something we don't really care about anymore. And so obviously if you post something, we want it to go away right? So then we can only see the content that's coming up. So what you can do is you can go to status, edit property, and then we're going to add posted. Okay. So now that we've done that, we're going to go into filter and select status. And if it is posted it's going to show that so we want to do is not so that way every time something is posted you can actually make it so it disappears and then that way when you're adding content it's only the content that is waiting to be posted if that makes sense so i just wanted to point that out otherwise you don't have to do that you could show 50 content pieces and you can just kind of make it according to what works best for you so that's that. That's how you can make a content calendar with a feed view. I know this is going to help you a ton. Please let me know if there are any questions that you may have or any topics you want me to cover. I would also love to know like tips or tricks that you might have with Notion. How do you manage your own clients? How do you manage content? All that stuff. I'd love to hear it and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this and I'll see you next time. Bye!